Yo, welcome back to the Mac Sports Attack. I am your Mac, Marvin Allen Cox, and today we are going to talk about the New York Jets quarterback situation. Aaron Rodgers has gone down, guys. Um, I wore my Make the Jets Great Again shirt. I thought about wearing it again tonight. Actually, I think it's right here. I, I wanted the Jets to be great, man. I wanted the Jets to be great again. We were hyped for week one. And the football guys just don't love us, man. They just don't love us. And four plays till Aaron Rodgers got hurt. So I'm wearing this shirt today that I bought. I was hoping mid-season when we're in top-tier form, I'll pull it out and show the world, get some laughs from us Jet fans with Aaron Rodgers looking in the mirror and seeing that he is the GOAT as we made our way to the Super Bowl. But now that dream's looking bleak, guys. That dream is looking bleak the New York Jets boy they say J-E-T-S stands for just endure the suffering uh, so we're gonna hop right into it guys thanks again for watching the Mac Sports Attack I am the Mac himself Marvin Allen Cox who do you want to see as our starting quarterback are you cool with Zach Wilson because I'm not <laughs> I am not so first and foremost Take out your crosses. Let's take a moment of silence for Aaron Rodgers getting hurt. Where's the time? Titanic music playing. Do, 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 do. Sad moment, man. I was hyped. If you look at the last short, we were hype as hell. We were in the Jets man cave. We were ready to, to roll. The stadium was packed. The stadium was electric. It was a great time, guys. And... The first freaking play from scrimmage, Brees Hall pops it wide open. And it took four plays for what makes it seem like our season is over. Four plays for Aaron Rodgers to betray us, to get hurt. I know I'm being too harsh, but it sucks, guys. It sucks. So what we got to do is we got to look forward. Unfortunately, in football, it's all about the next man up. And the next man up is Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is leading the troops. Zach Wilson went out there and he helped us win the game. But I'm not going to say he won us the game as some people who are trying to be optimistic say because it took us having the AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Shout out to Whitehead. Three picks, baby. What was that? Mo more than his whole season last year? And we had the special teams AFC Player of the Week Man, what a great story. I was hoping y'all been watching Hard Knocks. He just made the team. And now he's out there winning the game on the punt return unit. Amazing, amazing stuff. So, Zach Wilson, guys. Let's talk about Zach first. Zach Wilson, he did, I guess, look a little better. You know, last year, if you're a Jets fan, I know a lot of people. I've actually had people tell me, oh, don't you have a great backup? It's going to be okay. You obviously ain't watched the Jets before. Because <laughs> where did you see that at? I mean, last year was 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 not great. Last year was not good. Last year was was not awesome for Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson had six touchdowns. A starting quarterback in the National Football League had six touchdowns. And what makes it worse, he had seven interceptions. He had more interceptions than touchdowns both seasons in his career. More interceptions as touchdowns, period, for his NFL career. And just didn't get the job done. But the scary part last season was the easy plays, the easy throws, the screens, the dump offs, the easy check down. It just seems like either one, he was incapable of making it or two, he was afraid to make it as if he just saw a pick six like Colt McCoy did. And the national championship against Alabama happening every time. And he just froze. He just flinched. Well, on Monday Night Football, when he came in, he made the easy throws. I'll give him that. He made the screen plays. He made the dump offs. He did a good job one time. It was a running back screen where he looked to the left the whole time, let the play develop, and then dumped it off to the right to Brees. I mean, that is a little improvement from him. But a little is not going to do it, guys. We need a drastic improvement. And last year, we had the 29th 
offense in the NFL with Zach Wilson at the helm. Shoot, when he got hurt, I was with us. We celebrated Mike White taking over. Mike White looked way more effective, way better. And too bad Mike White, you know, he needs some meat on his bones. <laughs> he just got hurt again, and we had to go right back to Zach. And it just seems every time Zach started for us in his career so far, we've been praying that maybe the defense will win the game. Hoping the defense wins the game every time your starting quarterback steps on the field does not make you good enough to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. It might not even be good enough to make you a backup. Zach Wilson, what made us excited about him this offseason is that he was going to learn under Aaron Rodgers for a couple years and maybe he would transform into a starting quarterback. But now he's thrown into the fire and I don't think he's ready. I am not ready to go this whole season with Zach Wilson at home again. To me, if JD and yes, and JD we trust, so I'm not going to complain about JD too much, but if JD does not even does not attempt, I can understand if they try and fail. But if he does not attempt to trade for a quarterback, he is telling us the fans, he is telling the team that we have given up. We are waving the white flag and the season is over. And I think that is not acceptable. We're out here paying hard money, chanting J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 and you want us to see Zach Wilson take the helm? That's not acceptable. So for me, guys, we have to make a trade. Now, obviously, Zach Wilson is going to start week two against the Dallas Cowboys, and the Dallas Cowboys defense looked probably best in the NFL this week, quite frankly. But if he, he goes out there he gets destroyed and we look like how the Cowboys just made the New York Giants look. It's time to go. It's time to it's, it's time to go. It's time to go. So what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments here. I would love to have the discussion with you. Do you think Zach Wilson is the right option going forward for this season? Because this team is built to win. We have a top five defense. We have probably the best defensive line as a collective unit in the NFL. We have a tier one wide receiver. I'm glad the world saw it because we knew it from last year. We know Garrett Wilson, my favorite player, G-Dub 17, is a tier one wide receiver. We got a great tier two wide receiver too with Lazard. I, I feel real confident in Lazard. And he's really good in the run game. Uh, we have some good pass catching tight end options. Obviously, we didn't get to see them in the first game. Um, the our DBs are great too with Sauce and DJ Reed and that white hat head back there in the safety position. This team is made to win. With Aaron Rodgers, we had one of the best rosters in the NFL. And Zach Wilson definitely brings that down. So even if Zach Wilson came in and sucked, which some people was like, yeah, let's just suck again for a year and get a, another quarterback. The team is too good. The team is too good. It's just going to be the same as last year. We're going to win seven, eight games and barely miss the playoffs. So I'm, we're not asking for a Superman to come in and lead the team. We're not asking for Garrett. Uh, Garrett. We're not asking for Zach Wilson to be a top tier quarterback. We just need mediocre. We need somebody who when they get on the field, we don't sigh and say, damn, the defense has to win it today. We don't need a quarterback where the offensive coordinator is literally afraid to call plays. Hackett was afraid to run the offense on Monday night because Zach Wilson was at the helm. That's not acceptable. All right. We have a great running game. Hey, if Brees Hall was healthy last year, we might have made the playoffs. Let's be real. But Brees Hall, he's not at 100% yet. Let's call it 80 over 100 yards. Dalvin Cook, I think once he gets the flow into it, he's going to look great as well. We have a great offense surrounding pieces. We just need somebody to disperse the ball and not turn it over. So I have some options here we should consider. You Jet fans, tell me what you think. I'm going to give you my opinion. Number one, let's be real. Tom Brady is not coming 
to the New York Jets. Stop it. Stop acting like there's even a chance. First and foremost, the dude is a patriot, man. They just celebrated him week one. He's sitting next to Kraft. You think he's going to come to the Jets? That's number one. The dude is retired. You know how long it took for Brady to retire? The dude's retired, retired now. It's not happening, Jets fans. It's not happening. Mr. Tom Brady is gone. Cut it out. Colin Kaepernick. Come on, son. Come on, son. I would love to see Colin Kaepernick back in the NFL. I would. I think it would be a great message as he was clearly blackballed. But hey, he's not a Superman savior for our team. Can't happen. I wish you would sign for XFL or something, Cap. I'm not getting into that right now. I'm not getting political. That's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is who should be the Jets' next quarterback? Kaepernick? No. Cam Newton. Hmm. The name does interest me. I think he's had still some shoulder problems. And that's what's been slowing him down. Um, so if he had a healthy shoulder, would I look into uh, Cam Newton? Yeah. But for this season, eh -eh, I'm out. Carson Wentz. No. No. The one great season he had, he couldn't even finish because he got hurt. They won the Super Bowl. And it seems like he's been downhill ever since. I'm not with that at all. So, no Brady, no Kaepernick, no Cam Newton, no Carson Wentz, please. Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan is super underrated. I think he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. But with this offensive line, we need somebody who's able to move around a little bit. And if you want to see a man get killed on live TV, <laughs> that would be signing Matt Ryan. I'm out on that program as well. So who does that leave us? I'm going to give you some great options, some great names. So we're going to go more realistic options right now because Tim Boyle cannot be the backup quarterback. And Zach Wilson, another thing is he does get hurt. He does get hurt. So even if we didn't get somebody to compete for QB1, somebody who was a clear QB2, we need a, somebody who can go in and actually start and win a national football game. And the free agents, something we don't have to give up draft compensation for, would be Colt McCoy and Teddy Bridgewater. Now, both of those names, I would sign both of them in a heartbeat, either or. Teddy B last year looked pretty good before we Jets knocked him out when we played in the Miami game. He can run an offense, obviously. He's led multiple teams as a starter. Um, I mean, his stats aren't the best, but, um, you know, two seasons ago, 2021, he had 18 touchdowns and seven interceptions. That's more touchdowns than Zach Wilson probably has in his two years combined in NFL. And that's way less interceptions than Zach Wilson has had as well. Last year, he had four touchdowns and four interceptions for the Dolphins before we knocked him out. Uh, even that's a better ratio than Zach Wilson, which is more interceptions than touchdowns. So we know Teddy Bridgewater can command an offense. We know he, he can, you know, he's a good leader on the team as well. So that's a good something to look for if we're looking to not give up draft compensation. Colt McCoy, we've seen him bounce around. He doesn't have a lot of stats. He doesn't have a lot of starts. But he is capable of coming into a game and actually, like, running an NFL offense. Like, um, Hackenberg wouldn't... Hack, <laughs> Hackenberg. I'm thinking about up trash Jets quarterbacks from the past. Nathaniel Hackett would not have a problem calling an offense for Colt McCoy. Um, he's a gunslinger. He can run the West Coast offense. So those are two non-draft compensation, very cheap quarterbacks we can get as backups. So I, I would be awesome to bring those in the room because I think both of them could at minimum beat out Tim Boyle, right? So let's go to some serious names I think we should consider. All right, so my number one quarterback that I think the Jets should bring in is Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett has been running plenty of offenses, all right? 
I mean, started at the Patriots. You know, obviously that was a is a big discipline, structured team organization. So we know that you know he can come in and show a lot of professionalism. Uh, he went to the Colts, and the Colts he was able to start a good amount of games. Um, in 2017, he had 13 touchdowns to so seven interceptions, 3,000 yards. I mean, that's that's pretty solid. 28, 2018, he didn't really play. 2019, 18 touchdowns to six interceptions with an 88 quarterback rating. That's better than Zach Wilson has ever accomplished in an NFL uniform, uh, probably combined with both seasons. So 18 touchdowns to six interceptions, 3,000 yards, 60% pass and completion rating. That's pretty solid. And I know you're going to say 2019 was a while ago. So let's look at last year. Last year he was with the Browns, 2,600 passing yards, 12 touchdowns, six interceptions. He held down the fort for the Cleveland Browns before, you know, the masseuse, <laughs> Deshaun Watson came back from a six-game suspension. So obviously, eight, 12 touchdowns, six interceptions last year, 64% completion rating with an 89 passer rating. That's pretty solid uh, for a backup in the NFL. And that is definitely pretty solid. That That's, uh, at least, that is starting bottom starting caliber numbers. So you can argue Jacoby Brissett can be a starter in the NFL. And if you look at the Madden ratings, which, you know, some people like, he is in the top, 27 quarterbacks so you know there's 32 teams in the nfl so obviously it shows that the nfl has enough cachet on his name where they're saying he's a starting caliber rating wise quarterback so jacoby Brissett, to me you know he can move around so you know i think the line is getting a, a, a lot more bashing than it deserves i think you know once they gel and they mesh with beckton and Dwayne brown obviously they had not playing in so long they were a little rusty I think the line will look a lot better. But Jacoby Brissett, he is mobile. He can move. So that is a good asset to have on our team as well. So Jacoby Brissett is my number one option to replace. I'm not going to say not replace Aaron Rodgers. Let's say to overtake the offense from Zach Wilson. And obviously, Rodgers is gone. He won't be the GOAT this season. So we need somebody to take the helm. I think... You know, with Jacoby Brissett, if we get a, you know, two to one touchdown ratio as he has shown in the past, we can make the playoffs. We haven't made the playoffs in 12 goddamn years, man. So I know it. You're hurt. We're not able to make the Super Bowl this year. But God dang, let's show some some progress. Let's save Robert Sala his job. All right. He's done a great job. Him and JD of rebuilding this franchise for us. And I want to keep them around. So making the playoffs, I think, will save both of their jobs. Hopefully, Rodgers will rehab and come back next year. And we can go on that Super Bowl push again. So we need somebody other than Zach Wilson to get that job done. I just don't see Zach Wilson, unless he makes a substantial step up that we haven't seen yet, can lead us to playoffs. So we're looking otherwise. I think we need a trade. And my number one option to go get is Jacoby Brissett. I love it. Number two, guys. I've been searching between some of these names and um, where I should rank them in this list, right? And this name actually very much so surprised me with what he did last year. Um, I think he's got a bad rep since he got hurt. He was a starting quarterback for a long time in the league. Andy Dalton. I know, I said it. The Red Rifle, Andy Dalton. I was one of the people <laughs> that said he's trash now. I was one of the people that overlooked him. Andy Dalton, he did take the Bengals to the playoffs while he was there. He was the starting quarterback for the Bengals for years before they got the great Joe Burrow, in case people don't know. Uh, you know, he had seasons where he had a season where he had 33 touchdowns, man. 33 touchdowns, 
to 20 interceptions. That's a lot. But he's had 27 touchdowns. He's had 33 touchdowns. He's had 25 touchdowns. 25 to 7. That is great numbers. 25 to 12. Those are great numbers. So Andy Dalton does have some cachet to his name. Probably the best out of all the options I'm going to give you and discuss today. Andy Dalton has been... A clear top of the half QB at one time in his career. By top of the half, I mean like maybe 15. <laughs> but still, it shows that he has some promise. Now, last year for the Saints, I didn't realize he did so well. He had 18 touchdowns to nine interceptions. He had a 95 quarterback rating and a 66, well, rounded up, a 67% completion rating. That is starting quarterback stats in this league in the nfl so and he has something to prove right i mean he's been bounced around as a backup ever since he lost his job in the bengals and andy dalton just like we can say aaron Rodgers came here as an older starting quarterback with something to prove he's done the same now obviously he's not in the tier of aaron Rodgers, but he he at one time was a tier below so I think Andy Dalton is a fantastic name to look at and to consider to trading for. And it probably won't cost a lot to get him as well. So Andy Dalton running the New York Jets offense, I think can help us make it to the playoffs as well. My top two names, Jacoby Brissett, Andy Dalton. That's where we're going. My third name here is going to be Mr. Jameis Winston. Famous Jameis, right? Jameis has thrown for 5,000 yards. And 33 touchdowns one year. That is all-time season. That is that is up there with the Brady's and the Rodgers and the Peyton Manning's type of numbers. But what isn't is that he threw 30 interceptions that year. <laughs> so it was it was it was a it was a crazy crazy scenario. But that's 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 Jameis Winston. Crazy scenario. You don't know what you got, right? So in the past couple of years, he's toned it down a little bit. In 2021, he had 14 touchdowns to three interceptions. Maybe he finally made it click. But last year, he had four touchdowns, five interceptions with the Saints. Didn't look so hot again. So maybe Hackett could change his mind. Maybe he's learned something. Maybe he can be the new Geno Smith. Geno was trash for us. Sat for millions of years. And then... By the grace of God, got a starting opportunity with Seattle. And now he's seen as a very solid starting quarterback in our league. So maybe Jameis Winston got the wheels clicking. Maybe it, all he needs to do is take away the turnovers. If he could take away the turnovers, he is capable of putting up yards and putting up touchdowns. So famous Jameis, I think... It's going to be a little more difficult than the first two names I've mentioned. But he has the ability and the affinity to go out there and lead the team to the playoffs as well. This defense is a monster. This running game is a monster. You know, if he can turn down the turnovers, I know he's going to put up points on the board. So Jameis Winston is my number three option for us to consider to step in after the fall of Aaron Rodgers to take our New York Jets to the Super Bowl. So those are the top three names I have, guys. Those are the top three names I would love to see on our roster come in week three. I know it's too late for week two. I would love to see either Jameis Winston, Andy Dalton, or Jacoby Brissett on our roster competing with Zach Wilson for the number one spot. I, I, I'm i okay with them showing a little preferential treatment to Zach Wilson and allowing him to start. But he's going to mess up. And when he does, I would very much so rather one of these top names on our roster to take his spot than a Tim Boyle. <laughs> so those are my top three. What do you guys think? And now, before I go, I want to give you a couple other names that I would consider. But I don't think that they are very likely to lead us to the playoffs as these top three names I said. All right? So... I'm going to give it to you. Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor, once upon a time, played in our division for the Bills. And that was the best 
the best moment of his career. He made a Pro Bowl. He was looking good. So we know he has Pro Bowl caliber in him. And he has some cachet in the league. Now, the problem was when they put in that syringe to kind of help numb his pain when he broke his ribs. And he did the wrong thing. And what, it punctured his lung, I believe. And ever since then, he never really got a shot again. So, you know, the years he was good. 20 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 17 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 14 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. And that was in 2017. Ever since then, he really hasn't done nothing since. But he is a veteran. He is a leader. And he is used to the AFC East. And maybe he has a message to prove that the Bills let him go all those years ago. So Tyrod Taylor is somebody I would love to look into. Uh, Tyler Heineke, man. Tyler Heineke, I know he gets a bad rep in my opinion. I think he's a pretty okay, a pretty decent quarterback in the league. And he's a good bottom tier starter in the league. Uh, I, I like him better than Baker Mayfield, Mayfield for sure. Uh, he got some run in him. He can move. Actually, all these options I've been giving you can move around as well with our offensive line. Um, yes, in 2021, he had 20 touchdowns, but he had 15 interceptions. But last year, he had 12 touchdowns to six interceptions. So maybe maybe if he can do that, the two-to-one touchdown to interception ratio, he can game manage and run the offense for us to make the playoffs. So those are five names for you, my Jets fans. My number one option, Jacoby Brissett. My number two option, Andy Dalton. My number three option, Jameis Winston. Then I think there's a little gap. And then we have uh, Tyrod Taylor. And we have Tyna Heineke. Which of those five do you think is realistic we'll get? What we could talk about in another episode is what compensation it will take to get one of these guys. We are now in the midst of a season. And for a team to let go of their backup quarterback, you know, obviously they might make us pay a little bit. But, you know, I think... We can make the playoffs this year. We need to make the playoffs this year. And we can't just we can't just give it to Zach Wilson. We can't just give Zach Wilson the reins because every time we have so far, he has drastically let us down. They're, they're talking about him being one of the big busts, being the number two pick and being so down. So, Jets fans, I'm here with you. I'm suffering too. Maybe next year we get to see Aaron Rodgers be the GOAT. But what we got to do is this year, we got to keep the positive energy going. We got to keep the clubhouse. And we got to get a quarterback in here that the team is going to respect and fight for. Because, yeah, right now, it's cute with Lazard and Garrett Wilson telling the world we believe in number two. But what are they supposed to say? Right? They have no choice. I don't believe in number two. And if he has a couple bad weeks in a row, you're going to see what happened last year. When people started to give up on him and they were looking for Mike White, right? Now, he's done a way better job talking to the media so far. But what happens when he have a couple bad games? Is he going to revert to last year where he's blaming other people and, and not taking responsibility? I don't want to find out. I have nothing wrong with Zach Wilson. I actually like the kid. I think he's, he's an attractive guy. You know, he has a good little persona to him. And I think he has the talent inside his body. We just Somebody just needs to unlock it. And I don't think he's ready to be unlocked. So, come on, guys. What do you think? What do you say? Who should the Jets get? Is the season over? Do we still have a chance? I think we can still make the playoffs with this defense. We have a top five defense. I mean, you know, we have people comparing us to the, to the what, the 86 Bears? got to go out and prove it, right? But there's something to be had for this season, man. We can't just give up, man. We got a great special teams. We got a great running game. We got nice offensive weapons. And we know we have a fantastic defense. I still believe. But if we go forward with Zach Wilson, I'm going to lose hope real quick. So say it with me one time. J-E-T-S. Jets. Jets. Jets! Let's not give up, guys. This is the Max Sports Attack. Thanks for watching. I am the Mac himself, Marvin Allen Cox. Please comment. And if you like what I'm saying, like and subscribe.
Come on, Jets Nation.